just waiting. Okay, hey everybody. My screen is a little frozen on Vimeo, Kevin. Uh, but other than that, how's it going, everybody? I'm here to talk to you about kilns and all sorts of exciting things. So I got my L, &L kiln back here. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I don't have quite as fancy a setup as Jess. So um, just so you know, the quality may be a little, a little blurry. Um, Hold on one second. Do, 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 do. Let some people get in here. And we're gonna have question and uh, Q and A. So if you guys have questions about your kilns, about brands, new kilns, old kilns, used kilns, that kind of stuff, fixing them. I do all that kind of stuff. Hey Arlita, hey Lisa. Look at all you guys coming in here. <laughs> Oh man, good afternoon from Indiana. Hey Peggy. Oh my goodness, all sorts of Nona. Look at all you guys. <laughs> so I feel super appreciative. Um, a big thank you to Kevin and Jessica for putting this on. This is a ton of work in such a short amount of time. So um, I wanted to make sure we said thank you to them. Um, and yeah, like I said, um, this is, this is, this is a big deal. <laughs> Look at all you guys. Does anybody have questions? We can talk about kilns. Let's talk about kilns. I need Kevin. <laughs> so yeah, we've got, uh, right here behind me, I've got an L and L kiln. Um, this is my test, one of my two test kilns that I have in the studio. Um, and we use these all day, every day for testing. Um, yes, this is a doll kiln. Um, it doesn't have the Genesis controller on it. Um, our original kiln does not have a Genesis controller. And so we wanted both of our test kilns uh, to be identical. So we've kept the Dynatrol on this. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, boop, boop. not plugged in because I don't have the right power in my office. Um, but yeah, this is a test kiln when we use it. L&L Fuego today, I would have come to you, but I'm in the UK. That's okay, Jane, I understand. <laughs> Howdy from Texas. Massachusetts, oh my gosh, you guys are everywhere. Thinking about an L&L &L kiln, should we get the quad element upgrade? That's a good question. Um, so I find that the quad element upgrade um, is a really good option if you're firing a lot of flat work a lot of tiles, um, things like that. Um, if you're not gonna be doing a ton of that, the quad element upgrade eh, is not really necessary. Um, there's the quad upgrade and the E-Quad Pro. The E-Quad Pro um, is basically a kiln with quad elements, but it's got a boosted electrical capacity. So um, it's not necessary. Why and when should you use a hole? Uh, we use our holds at the end of our glaze firing to let everything kind of simmer down a little bit. Um, so that's typically when I use our holds. Um, I was talking to a man two days ago about buying a used kiln. He suggested as a newbie, I should buy new. It's too expensive. Your thoughts. So Pat, buying a, um, buying a used kiln, I typically like to tell people as a rule, a general rule of thumb, um, expect to spend about a thousand to twelve hundred dollars on a used kiln. If you're out and you're looking for a used kiln and it's like two, three hundred dollars, expect to have to put money into that kiln. Um, if you want a good used kiln, um, make sure you're gonna be using electrical components that are right for you. So if you've got like a school that's selling a kiln, you have to make sure that that's gonna match your electricity. Um, Oh man, all sorts of questions. What do you recommend for first kiln for home studios? Obviously an L&L. &L. Uh, we sell Scott L&L &L and um, Conart kilns. We are L&L &L folks. Um, I've got five, six L&L &L kilns in my studio. They are super easy to work on. Um, 
Should the lid be cracking? Uh, April lids crack. They they always crack. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. <laughs> I'm scrolling through um, everybody. I'm just scrolling through comments. So let's see here. How do you program segment firing? Peggy, um, I do have a special link that you can program um, for the segment firings, especially on the uh, LNL kilns. There's an easy fire side right here, which is like the pre-programmed. And then there's a very fire side. And that's where you put in segment things. Um, so like you could put in a, a multiple segment program. Um, real quick, Kevin, um, the stream is up on Facebook and it's good for me, but for whatever reason, I can't see your chat or anything in the Vimeo screen. Um, let's see. You want to get a kiln, but you don't have the inside space. What should I do if I'm only option is outside in Florida? Um, feed looks good. Turn the sound off on Facebook. I'm good now. Is my sound good, Kevin? Outside kilns, the only thing you need to worry about is moisture. So as long as you can keep it covered, you should be good. <laughs> Hi, Molly. When do you know when to change the elements? That's a good question, John. Um, so there's a couple ways you can test elements. You can measure the ohms or the resistance using a multimeter. Um, the other thing that I like to tell people, especially if you're firing cone six, um, you're going to get about 75 to 125 firings. So the kilns will keep track of that. You also can notice um, the elements when they're in their tracks are like this. They kind of parallel pertinent next to each other. And older kilns or older elements will start to like merge together or lay down flat. So that's a really good indication that you're gonna be needing elements soon. Also um, a firing that takes typically say like eight hours, you start to get into like the nine, 10, 11 hour range and you know, oh, my elements are kind of having a hard time. I'm gonna need to replace them. Oh man, look at all these questions. You have a kill on a wheeled cart and use it in the basement. It is not vented, but we have fans. Can you just open the windows? That should be fine. I don't currently have a kiln. What are some things you must have and must know before getting a small kiln for the home? Uh, ventilation. So if you're going to have a vent, um, if you're going to have a kiln and it's going to be in a living space, you're going to want to put it with a vent. Um, if it's going to go out in the garage, the vents are kind of optional. Uh, other than that, you just want to be really aware of the electrical capabilities that your house has and what you're able to run. So if your vent has started making a weird noise, uh, you may need a new motor. And I'm just scrolling through comments trying to keep up, guys. <laughs> What kind of Allen L's do we have? So in my studio, the first Allen L kiln uh, that we got was an easy fire, the 28T. That is a 10 cubic foot um, hobby kiln. It's about the largest hobby size kiln that I would sell um, to a person individually. And that kiln is, I wanna say 16 years old now. After we got that kiln, we got um, a Da Vinci, which is a 16 and a half foot um, rectangle. Um, that's also an L&L. &L. And then after the Da Vinci, we got an E-Quad Pro and then an Easy Fire XT. Now the E-Quad Pro and the Easy Fire XT kilns that we have are prototype kilns. So l, &L wanted to sell them. We bought them and tested them out for them and they then went ahead with them uh with those so we don't sell used kilns um i don't get into that can you sell me and can i sell to you and ship i can ship anywhere um so if you guys are you know in alabama um yeah i can you buy it for me you'll get my clayscapes discount and then we'll ship it to you so 
Question. The kiln opens slightly as I get higher in temp and you see a glow. I put a latch on, but I do not lock it. The slight lift of the lid normal. Yes, that is normal. You should latch it down, however. Do they sell LL kilns anywhere in Canada? Tracy, I'm not sure. That would be a question that I would have to look into. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. I have a 23T with three inch brick Genesis controller. Those are my favorites. Um, I don't know how far behind I am, guys, so you just have to bear with me. I have only used the easy fire side. What if I want to do a horsehair firing? A thousand degrees and remove them. So you just throw it on an easy fire, fast glaze to a thousand degrees. When it gets to a thousand degrees, you open your lid, pull the pots out, horsehair them. Brenda, no, you should be fine in an insulated shed in Canada. Um, I like to tell people, um, if you think about kiln and your temperature, um, kiln firings are going up to like 22, 2300 degrees. So the difference between like 60 degrees outside and zero degrees outside is very minimal. It's like a cone and a half. Um, and so it's not that big a deal if you've got it outside. It's the moisture. Um, so you want to make sure you're keeping it dry. Jane, I do know about cone art kilns. We sell them. It's cooler on the bottom. Should I use only split shelves? No vent in the garage. Donna. Um, no, the shelving shouldn't have too much. The Liberty Bell is small. Um, so... I would definitely use the vent. The vent is going to even that out a little bit, but you also may have to do a thermal couple offset, um, which is easy enough for us to do um, with a programmer. How important is it to do a cone temperature test and how often? Um, that's for Jack Wrightham. Um, Jack, we put our cones, we do our test cones, um, and probably every five or six firings, we'll put a, a cone in um, just to make sure that it's firing accurately. So it is pretty important um, that we keep our cone, our firings calibrated. So uh, we fire to a hot cone six. So this cone here is a cone six and it's just touching. Um, and that's what we fired to here at Clayscapes. I do not, uh, Patty, I mean, with Gare Kilns, I'm not sure. I know they're out of business, I believe, but um, if you have like a specific question, I might be able to answer it. Here's our Genesis controller. Any kiln, so this is Renee, she's asking about upgrading to a Genesis. Any kiln that you have um, that's an L&L &L can be upgraded to the Genesis controller. So it's just an additional fee and then, uh, you know, a little bit of wiring. So you can definitely do that. What are your prices for L&L &L kilns, Kathleen? Um, I do kilns to quote, um, but typically uh, any kiln that you order from me that's an L&L, &L, with some exceptions, you know, if you're looking at some of the bigger production model kilns, um, this is not going to be accurate, but we offer a 25% discount off retail price. Um, and then right now, if you buy a kiln and a furniture kit, you're gonna get a free upgrade to the Genesis controller, which is typically, uh, it's normally $140 um, on a new kiln. If you have, um, like somebody mentioned earlier, they have a kiln already and wanna buy a Genesis, that's gonna be, um, I wanna say it's like a $300 upgrade, um, but on a new kiln, you're gonna save 140, so. Uh, da -da 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 -da. South Carolina, it was such a positive experience. Oh, thank you, Shannon. Two Duncan manual kilns and recently moved into another house. We had 220 installed in our outbuilding, but wiring wasn't correct. I started one and got rapid fire popping. Is it ruined? I would definitely want to check the, so you're looking at manual kilns. Um, that rapid fire popping sounds to me like arcing in the box. It's not necessarily ruined, um, but I would definitely check it out and make sure that nothing's scorched. You may just have to replace a few switches. The manual kilns are a little bit more basic. So you don't have like a control board that's going to get fried. Um, so you'll be good to go. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I can't service kilns in Tennessee. <laughs> oh, man. Oregon, it gets cool. Da, 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 da. Just bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. Holy cow. You guys are asking all sorts of questions. Uh, this is from someone on another stream. I have an old manual kiln, but fire outside, and we're in Canada. What is the lowest, lowest temp outside to be safe to do so without damaging your kiln? Like I said, temperature outside isn't going to matter as much as moisture. So, No, right, Ray, we don't put a cone in every shelf. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put a cone in somewhere. Typically, it's in the middle. Um, if that cone is way off, our next firing, we may put cones in each shelf. Um, we just do one cone in a, in a firing every once in a while um, to make sure we're around about where we want to be. How important is it to fire a full kiln, Molly? Holy cow, I'm caught up. Molly, uh, so firing a full kiln is, you know, it's not that important, right? It's about efficiency. So if you are firing a kiln, I fired a 10 cubic foot kiln with one pot in it um, because I needed to know what those results were going to be. And I needed to know right away um, that firing cost me the same as if I fired it full. So for you, it's what's OK with you. You know, do you want to fire it full or do you want to fire it half full? Um, firing an even kiln is very important. So if it's not completely full, it needs to be packed evenly top to bottom. Um, that way you don't get some kind of error. Dun, 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 dun. All right. I'm over 70 years old and do pottery for myself and for gifts. What kind of kiln would be good for me? A hobby potter. Um, any kind of kiln is going to be great. Um, the really nice thing about uh, what we sell, um, again, we sell the Allen Owls, the Scuts, and the Cone Arts. Um, we want to sell the best product that's on the market. So if you're looking for a hobby kiln, um, you know, it's going to depend on what you're making, how often you want to fire, and um, the electrical that you have available in your space. And then, you know, from there, we just talk size and budget. Um, and so anytime you were to call or order a kiln from Clayscapes, even if you know exactly what you want, I'm going to wind up asking you those questions. Um, that way we make sure that, you know, we're not ordering the wrong electrical on accident, which is why we don't have a lot of our prices online for kilns. I don't want you to order a kiln online and get something that's not right. So that's why I want to talk to you guys. Um, the benefits of the Genesis controller. Some say they're problematic. Peggy, I haven't had any problems with the Genesis controller. Um, we put a Genesis on our eQuad Pro, and it was a little bit of a learning curve. The thing you have to remember is putting a putting a new controller on a kiln that's already in use is almost like hitting the factory reset. So this controller is already dialed in. I have some offsets. On, I have some um, del cone delays, things like that programmed that a new controller, if I were to put on here, would not have. So that would take some practice. Um, but I really like the Genesis controllers. They offer a lot of functionality that the Dynatrols don't. Um, you can run diagnostics off the menu um, and it will check your relays and element health uh, on there. Um, it'll also chart your firings for you. So it'll have a graph that you can see where your firing is supposed to go and where your firing is going. You can hook it up to an app on your phone so you can keep track of it. You can't fire it, like you can't control it from your phone, but you can keep track of it from your phone. Um, and then also um, you can plug in your electrical cost per kilowatt hour and it will let you know like what type of uh, what your firings are costing so so i really like the genesis controllers what is the best way to replace a kiln brick that is damaged that is a long and in-depth question that i would have to have you talk to me about not here because <laughs> that could take up the rest of the thing so um this person says hi i have a liberty bell kiln uh, uh piece mounted in the kiln the milk clay on the fire brick but not on the element how can i get it off the fire brick i have 
a baby screwdriver that I use to chip out stuff like that. Um, ooh, looking at the feed, it's getting all blurry. So I use that and I just chip it out and you're going to lose some brick, but that's, you know, the cost of doing business there. So let's see here. Is there a small portable to take outside? I have no vent system. Yeah, I mean, you can get, I mean, this one here is really small um, and one person can carry it. Um, you can also get uh, some of the easy fire kilns are smaller. And like an 18S is, is able to be moved pretty easily. There's also rolling stand options and things like that. Um, let's see here. How to test connections of elements to the post. Um, that you're going to want um, a multimeter. You have to set it to ohms. Okay, I don't know if everybody can see me still. Do, 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 do. I don't know if Kevin can hear me. I'm sorry, guys. If you're in um, YouTube or um, you know on ClayShare, let me know. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to catch up with the comments here. How much damage can a kiln brick have before it needs to be replaced? Quite a bit. Does covering the kiln with a few blankets help the current home for the kiln humidity? No, it is not going to help. What's your favorite test kiln? My favorite test kiln is this one here, the, this little baby doll kiln. Um, but we have it hooked up to 240, so we're not running it on 110 volts. Um, that gets into problems with, with things like that. So we still want to run it on 240. Sherry, does a two-ring kiln cause that less expensive? Yes, a two-ring kiln is less expensive, but typically you're not going to be able to add rings later. Um, unless you buy a special type of kiln. So that's something that we could talk about. Um, you can do glass fusion in these kilns. Uh, da, da, da. My kiln is a vent. Uh, we turn our kiln vents off when the kiln's done firing. We'll find a shelf that fits it. What are my options? If you've got a tiny kiln that's 10 by 10, um, we sell a nine inch kiln shelf and you know, we can get you one of those. I can order special round ones if it's like a round or oct octagonal kiln, um, or I can cut square ones. Um, converting to an electric controller from a manual kiln is not really super straightforward. I know that Olympic sells in a, a thing that you can just add on instead of your kiln sitter. But other than that, you're not going to be finding anything easy uh right let's see here the video stopped yep we found you let's see here oh 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 look at you guys plus the, is there also a discount plus the genesis controller maggie so the way clayscapes does it is um there is a discount off of the retail price of the kiln so if you go to lnl's website and you're looking at their kilns they have a price that's the retail price. You're gonna pay 25% less than that price. So if you've got a, uh, let's see here, 
if their price on there is 2500 um, through Clayscapes, you'll pay 1875 And then if you buy the furniture kit, you get a free Genesis upgrade on top of that. Um, da -dum -da. Yep, want to know where you live so I can move next door. <laughs> Diane, if you wanted to move to Syracuse, New York, um, I may be able to help hook you up. <laughs> How many kilowatts it uses? Yeah, I mean, I could, Mary, it does tell you that. Can kiln companies print out the instructions to electricians? Because the electrician info on the kiln itself. Yes. So I have in um, the kiln book, in the manual, and then also on the website, I can print out all the electrical specs ahead of time, all of the connections that you're going to need, everything like that. Um, that is another thing that, you know, if you've got an electrician hooking your stuff up, a lot of times I'll have them call me directly um, so that they can talk to me about any of that stuff. Sherry, if you've got tiny little cracks in the bottom of your kiln, that's totally normal. Um, if you are worried about it, you can always flip over your kiln. Frank, and adding a, can you add a switch to the Genesis to turn off the vent at the end of the firing? That is an option. Um, you can do that. Um, it's just a small amount of wiring on the control board. Uh, we hook ours up into a timer, so our vent will just hook into the timer, and then the timer hooks into the wall, and then we just have that turn it off. You have a Scott Firebox 8x8. Do I have shelves for that? Sherry, I can cut shelves for that. No problem. Um, so a ceramic kiln can be used to fuse glass. A glass kiln typically cannot be used for ceramics. Um, the temperature that a glass kiln is rated for is much lower than what the ceramics is. So what's the proper way to dispose of an old kiln? We just chuck it just right out. There's nothing toxic in there. You don't have to worry about any of that. I don't know they make any more. But do you know, Cone, I would fire to melt my art clay silver, 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. I do have a cone chart. Um, I would have to slide out of frame to check it out. And I'm not sure the video feed can handle that at the moment. But, uh, Deb, if you wanted to contact me directly, I could get you that, no problem. What is the device for testing a short? Um, you want a multimeter, but to test a sh there's a short, um, you want to be really careful about that. And so basically, I have a video on ClayShare uh, where I go into depth about how to diagnose what's wrong with your kiln. And basically, uh, I like to call it electrical connect the dots. And so we start at the outlet with the probes, and then you follow the electricity through your kiln. And the scary part is a lot of times you have to do it while the kiln is on. Um, so if you're not super, um, if you're not super confident about it, I would definitely have an electrician do it. What's the best way to stack glazed plates? Not to, they shouldn't be stacked. Um, can you upgrade a current LNL with a Dynatrol to a Genesis? Deb, yes, you can do that. It costs in the range of 300 ish dollars. In the glass, I wanted to melt the rims. Would you know what cone I should buy for that? Typically, you're. Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, I would have to look that up. I have a quad. So, Kevin's got somebody on YouTube. I have a quad fire with the Genesis controller. Will the Genesis controller ever have the functionality to run all kiln functions? Um, I'm going to need some more info than that. What do you mean all kiln functions? Uh, Therese wants to know how can I get a new lid for my old teacher plus kiln from Duncan? Um, I think Duncan Kilns are still being made. You can get a new lid. Um, I would have to look up who bought them. I think Paragon may have bought the Duncan brand for kilns. Uh, so I would say definitely want to check that out. 
how long are the electrical cords for the Allen L kilns? Typically, Allen L kilns come with a six foot cord. You can use an extension cord if you need to. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, you know, you definitely want something that's up to code. From the phone app. Oh, okay, so they want to know if there'll be full functionality to control the kiln from the phone app. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I've talked to folks over at Allen L, and there isn't anything like in the works uh, and immediately to do that. Um, that's something that would be pretty far down the road, I would think. So, got all sorts of folks in here. 169 on Facebook. So yeah, um, that um, looks like I'm caught up. Could you tell me a program hold cycle for off-gassing issues during bisque firing? Lori Hendricks. I have just that link. I'm sending it to Kevin now. Um, and I have the exact thing. It's a link that does exactly what you want. Looking at dog kilns for test kiln, which one is best for heavy usage in the studio setting? So if you look at the LNL doll kilns, they have, I want to say like five or six of them. And we get the, it's the LL DLH 11 DX. And that's got the Dynatrol option. You also want it so that it doesn't hook up into a 110, uh, which is your typical, like normal plug. Uh, we want to hook into whatever power you have for your regular kiln. So like a 240 volt single phase or a 208 volt three phase, whatever power you have, um, Beyond 110 is what you want to use for that. You have a scut kiln and there's a slight gap. Even with the latch fastened, is that normal? Yeah, you're going to get a gap. It, it just happens. Is it hard to wire your kiln or use the six-foot cord and plug directly into a wall? Christina. Um, you know, I don't typically do, like, wiring work on buildings. I can't imagine it's that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You just have to run wires from your breaker box to a plug, and you'll be good to go. How do you add slow cool to easy fire programs? You don't. Um, Beth, you would have to run a very fire option. And so you would run on this side of the kiln here, that very fire side. I mean, you would program in your program to heat up. And then after it reaches its peak temperature, you want to then program further segments for your slow cool and then holding. Um, and so that's something that if you had a four segment firing that you wanted to slow cool, you would program a five or a six segment firing and add that in after. Highest cone fire for a kiln that will only fire to cone six. So I like to tell folks, um, and it depends on what you're doing, but if your kiln is only rated to cone six, it's going to have a hard time if you're firing it to six. Um, I, that would be, um, if you had a kiln that's rated to cone six, I would only ever low fire with it. Um, if you want to fire to cone six, I recommend that your kiln be rated to at least cone eight, maybe cone 10. Maintenance vacuum, how, when? Uh, whenever you have an explosion in your kiln or change your elements. Manual says to prop the lid open until a thousand. What are your thoughts on that? No, especially if you have a vent, you don't need to do that. What speed do you fire at for both bisque and glaze? D, we fire super slow for glaze, for bisque. Our bisque firings typically take about 18 hours. Um, and then our glaze fires are in the eight to nine hour range. Hotter at cone six. Do you think we could put on another ring and not plug that element in? I mean, Sheila, yeah, you can do that. Um, but we've done it, it's totally fine. Cone seven sitter only will fire to cone four, witness cone. New elements, new sitter adjusted, cone seven sitter only will fire to cone four. It's possible that you don't have enough power 
to actually fire the cone seven. A, mm, I have a scut and fire in a garage. Would you recommend a vent be installed? No, you don't need a vent. Getting a new kiln next month. Procedure for initial firing. Lori, um, in your annual, you will get a whole thing that will tell you exactly what to do for your first firing. Uh, when we get new kilns here at Clayscapes, we just put work in them and fire them. Um, but, you know, you can totally, they have like a first test fire and everything. So how long of a preheat would you recommend on a bisque in your humid basement? We always do a minimum of a three-hour preheat. Um, we're in a studio setting where we've got over a hundred students. And so they always get preheated. Um, our glaze firings sometimes will get preheated as well. It's important that if you're glazing work and then putting it straight into the kiln that you preheat, um, that way you don't get any popping off of glaze, things like that. As far, advice for operating a small kiln without a vent in a studio as far as no venting. Richard, um, I mean, you're going to want to reduce the wax um, that you're using, you know, maybe put a fan in a window. The, the hard part is you don't, you want as little air movement as possible in a studio. So that's why the direct vents are really, you know, the way to go. So. Is a hold the best way to even out temps between the bottom and the top in a non-vented kiln? I've noticed about a half a cone difference between the bottom, middle, and top. Maureen, if it's an electric kiln that's got a digital controller, uh, the best way is going to be um, a cone offset uh, and adjusting something in the uh, in the controller settings to make it do that. Um, if a hold is just going to make all of it hotter. What's the difference in performance or maintenance of a two and a half inch brick and a three inch brick kiln? Uh, the thicker the brick, the more energy efficient it's going to be. So a kiln that's got three inch brick is going to cost less to fire. It's going to heat up a little bit quicker and it's going to cool down a little bit slower. The two and a half inch brick kiln is going to cost slightly more per firing to fire. Um, but it is going to cool down faster. So uh, I know folks that are use that want to do like crystalline firing where they have to cool it down as fast as possible. You're going to want to go with a two and a half inch brick. Um, and then you get into things like the cone arts, which have three inch brick and then an extra inch of insulation. Insulation. And those are super energy efficient. Um, they're going to cost even less to fire each firing. Um, but they're going to take even longer to cool down. Just got a cone art ready to test fire. How do I mix and apply the kiln wash? Um, kiln wash is typically a just add water kind of situation. And then you will apply it to one side of your kiln shelves. I don't ever tell people to put kiln wash on their brick. You don't need to do that. Um, just put it on your kiln shelves. You should never be firing anything directly on your brick, so no big deal. If your garage is under your living space, you do need a vent. Yes, anytime your kiln is going to be in or directly under any living area or studio area, I always recommend a, a kiln vent. Smells like the glaze fumes. Do I need to clean the gas heater? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't sell gas heaters. Bump, bump, bump. How much water? Um, you know, Ju, it's you know, you're just gonna mix. Uh, it's gonna be thinner than glaze, so you, it doesn't need to be super thick. Um, I also recommend if, especially if you got like a big five pound bag of kiln wash only mix up a pound or two at a time if kiln wash sits in a bucket um it's not bad for it it just smells after a while do you have a person in the studio during the entire firing for safety we do not um realistically um i mean ideally yes you would have somebody there so that 
if something went catastrophically wrong with a kiln, you'd be good. You'd be okay. Um, realistically, that's just not going to happen. Um, so, you know, we trust that we keep our maintenance up to date. We keep up all of our elements and relays and things like that. Uh, and then the, the other thing about these kilns, especially the newer kilns, um, they come with so many fail safes that you would have to, you have to do something really, really messed up in the controller to bypass all those um, and have some kind of catastrophic failure. If we had manual kilns, it would be a completely different issue and you would definitely want someone to be around the whole time. LL kilns are made in New Jersey. When loading the kiln, should larger objects be placed toward the center or does it matter? Christina, um, it doesn't matter. Does a kiln vent help prevent pinholes? Uh, it can. The most important part of preventing pinholes is going to be the length of your firing for your bisque. You want a really long bisque and you want it to be long in the right spot. So if you just fire a long bisque and it takes forever at the top end, that's not going to help. It needs to be long between 1,000 degrees and 1,600 degrees. That's where what we have is called a phase conversion, where organic materials in the clay burn out as gas um, and leave the kiln. The vent helps get those out. The, if you don't go... If you go too fast between 1,000 degrees and 1,600, um, all of those organics don't burn out, and then they will continue to do it when you get back to that temperature in the blades, giving you pinholing. So by having that extra long bisque, if you continue to get pinholing, we've eliminated the, uh, the fact that it could be the bisque. Um, and then we move on to looking at the blades. Da, 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 da. Let's see. We've always sprinkled plain silica on my shelves as kiln wash. That's how they did it at school. What do you think? Eh, there's no need to do that. It's a lot of dust for, you know, you just use kiln wash. Let's see here. What amount do you recommend for your cone 7 Dory? Uh, Dory, so for your cone 7 kiln, um, I would say, I mean, you're going to have to call or get a hold of me. Separate from this, uh, we would have to look at uh, what the kiln requires and what you have and things like that. How long is my discount for? It is until the 28th. And the best way to take advantage of that discount is going to be to either get a hold of me on Facebook, email me, or give me a call at Clayscapes. Uh, my email is andrew at clayscapespottery.com. And, and you, or you can just get a hold of me at you know at the Clayscapes website. Um, because of this whole shutdown thing, I'm sure we're going to have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, so I know everybody will have to be patient, but um, we'll we'll make it work for you. But that goes till Saturday. Do I sell raku kilns? I don't sell raku kilns, um, but I will be doing a class on how to make a raku kiln. A quick question, people plugs, plug all or leave the top one open. Plug them all, especially if you have a vent. If you have a vent, there's no need to ever take this out. Um, if you don't have a vent, leave the top one open until you don't have any uh, moisture coming out. <laughs> Discount, you're coming from a glaze. We're gonna be talking about glaze tomorrow. Ooh, I'm excited. With the Genesis, it, is it slow at the temperature to prevent pinholes? Mary. Mary, I have a special program that um, I don't know if Kevin can share that up on the screen. There's a link um, that I wrote for Alan L. And it's a special program that you would plug in on the Verifier option, or there's a custom program option in the Genesis, and then that saves it. So you only have to plug it in once, and then it'll save it. And then you can go in and fire that custom program every time you do a bisque. Let's see here. Speak on front-loading kilns. Front-loading kilns are really nice. Um, there are some misconceptions about them. I find that people want to buy a front-loading kiln to 
um, save their backs is the biggest one. Um, that's not always going to be the case, um, especially when you're loading. So if you're loading a front loading kiln, you have to lean in to load your kiln. Um, and as you get to the top of that front loading kiln, you are straining your back um, to lean in like that. So um, that's one thing. Um, for the size of a front loading kiln, you could probably get two top loading kilns for the same price. So Kathy has a cone difference between top and bottom shelf. How much of a cone offset should I do? I would start with a 20, 30 degrees, but you may need to push it to 50. Does the E23T slow bisque slow for the conversion between 1,000 and 1,600 degrees? It does not. That's why it's a custom program that I wrote. Um, the slow bisque program is still too fast. Um, can you give us a firing schedule for your bisque fire? Um, yes, I think Kevin posted that up. So, And I've got a link that I can always share if you guys need it. Quick summary of the materials you use for your Raku kilns and a quick summary of the class. There would be nothing quick about that, unfortunately. But you can give me a call at Clayscapes or shoot me an email, uh, and I can give you that list um, if you want. Glaze fire plugs without a vent. <laughs> Thermocouple adjustments work on every kiln of firing in the kiln. Kind of firing in the kiln, yes. So the um, thermocouple, there's a thermocouple offset, which will basically tricks the temperature probe into thinking it's a different temperature. Um, and then there's a cone offset, which tricks the computer to think that it's a different temperature when it reaches that cone. So there's different reasons to use different offsets. What's the best shelf to buy? Full versus half. Depends on the kiln that you have. I like full shelves, but if you get into the bigger kilns, full shelves can be problematic. So, you know, we'd go with the halves. Did you say that it was not necessary to vent a scut kiln until 1,000 degrees, even if you don't have a vent? Um, you're still going to get some outgassing. So if you've got a vent and you're going and you're going up, you, you want to be running the vent whenever the kiln is on. Um, because not in the beginning, it's going to vent moisture. And at the end, it's going to it's going to vent off-gassing. And moisture, um, the other thing that you have to think about with a vent is venting that moisture is going to prolong the life of your kiln. Um, everybody that's got a kiln and you look at the outside of the metal um, and it's all corroded and things like that, that is the off-gassing material connecting and combining with moisture on the outside of the kiln and creating sulfuric acid, which um, will corrode your metal. So if you have a vent, you're going to um, prolong the amount of time that it's going to take for that to break down. Your kiln is outside, and you've always left your top vent open. Should you close all vents when glazing? Yeah, I always close them all. What's the benefit of a slow bisque? Eddie, you're going to reduce your amount of um, outgassing the slower the bisque. What causes blistering in a glaze load? Um, that is going to be, so we'll definitely touch base on that tomorrow as well. We can talk about all sorts of things like pinholing and crazing and blistering. Um, but really quickly, blistering in a glaze load is going to come from two sources. It's going to come from not long, a long enough bisque and the bisque fire. So those outgasses are going to create um, a bubble of gas between the clay and the glaze layer. Um, you can also get blistering or pinholing if the glaze is too thick. And then that we can talk about tomorrow. Your thermal does not have the white covering. How bad is that? Not that big a deal. Let's see here. Have you talked about the new kiln shelving that glaze doesn't stick to worth the extra cost? So I imagine you're talking about the advancer kiln shelves, those silicon carbide ones. Um, it depends to each their own. They're super light. 
Uh, so especially if you have problems lifting, you know, it may be worth it for you. It depends on how often you're firing. Um, it's not something that I would use. There's all sorts of restrictions and if they get wet, they'll explode that kind of thing. So Rhonda, should you have a vent for a kiln that is on a patio outside? No, you do not need a vent. Uh, what kind of kiln shelves do you recommend? Lighter weight. Uh, so we sell the high Luna kiln shelves that come in from um, Canada. We get them from Canada. They are super durable. They are super flat. I've, I don't think I've seen a warped one yet. Um, and they're really durable as far as cracking. Um, how you post in your kiln is going to dictate whether or not your kiln shelf cracks. So you want to be really careful about how you post. Make sure you post in threes, things like that. What cone do you fire to for bisque? We fired a cone 06. The cone that you fire to is going to also dictate how glaze applies. So I know Jess, I believe Jess fires to an 04, which is hotter. So Jess fires a hotter bisque, um, and we fire cooler. And what that does is our kiln, our glaze is going to apply to the pot differently. It is, the pot is more porous because we fire to a lower temp. So it's going to take more glaze. Um, so you also have to take that into account when you're diagnosing, if you're having glaze issues, uh, you wanna make sure you're looking at what temperature you bisque to, what temperature you glaze to. It doesn't stem from just, oh, the glaze is bad. You know, there's a whole line of thinking that you have to kind of check out before you just go straight to the glaze, basically. So, could you could weather cause issues, Judy? So, Judy, yeah. I mean, having a kiln outside on a patio, if it's not covered, yeah, it's definitely going to be an issue. So, you want to make sure. Again, it's it's all about moisture. Right. You know, if it's a nice, hot, humid day out, it's real dry. There's no wind. Like we're not worried about that. It's it's the it's the erosion of wind and water from rain and things like that. that are going to cause issues. Um, advancer kiln shelves are really nice. Uh, you know, you have to be careful with them. I know they just put out some new a new type of kiln shelf that like you can't use in an electric kiln because they conduct electricity. Um, so yeah, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, if you're looking to spend the money on a nice pair of shelves and you're not going to drop them or, you know, you don't drip a lot. Yeah, they're, they're, they're good. I've sold them. You know, I can, I can get them. How can I get a quote on my specific needs? You can email me. You can message me on Facebook. Uh, you can call me at Clayscapes. Um, or if any of those are too difficult for you and you wanted to get a hold of Jess, I'm sure she would pass any of those inquiries along to me. If you already have pinholes at 04, going to 05 or 06 won't help pinholes. Rhonda, so the bisque maximum temperature isn't what we're looking for as far as what causes pinholes. Once you get to 1600 degrees, um, you're done. And so 040506 are all above that 1600 degree mark. So it's about lengthening the time between 1000 and 1600. Um, just increasing the temperature of your bisque is not going to affect whether or not you get pinholes. So the vent you're talking about part of the kiln. The vent, um, this kiln here, I don't have a vent attached to it. It basically is an add-on. So like if you were to order a kiln, you, you know, you're going to pay for the kiln, you're going to pay for the kiln shelf kit, you're going to pay for the kiln vent. Like those are all separate items, um, but they do attach directly. Um, so it's a direct vent straight at the bottom of the kiln. So I think people have run out of questions. Like, holy moly, I could talk forever on kilns. <laughs> No problem, everybody. No problem. 
Please ask Kevin where I can find that link you offered for gassing issues during the bisque firing. It, it is, uh, maybe Kevin can throw that up again really quick. Um, it is on LNL's website. I can always um, post that link on the ClayShare Facebook page, or if you email me, I can send it to you. So, so would it help to do a whole segment in that temperature range, Rhonda? Yes, it would help to do that. Um, so yeah, Kevin's got that pinholing and blistering info up right now. Um, so that would be something to, to definitely check out. Heather, increasing the amount of time for bisque will help with pinholes, right? Yes, as long as you increase that time between 1,000 degrees and 1,600. So, all right, um, guys, I am going to see you tomorrow. We're going to talk about um, glazes and glaze um, chemistry, if you want. So you can definitely ask questions on chemistry, things like that. And then I'm also going to have examples of my Clayscapes pottery glazes um, ahead of Jess's glazing segment. And Seeker 2020 code works only once. Is that right? I believe so, but I would have to double check that. If you need to add on and you've already used the Enseca 2020 code, just email it to me and I can add it on. Like we're not shipping anything right now because we're closed. So, all right, everybody have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow.